Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. If you like this watch, please visit it and buy it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today, we discuss the Omega DeVille Central Tourbillon. This an extraordinary reference 5113.30.00, the model made from 2002 to 2006, the first of the series started in 1994 to be chronometer certified that 2002 to 2006 piece and on my wrist the extraordinarily rare combination of this watch with the full factory yellow brick road. That's right, this one's on a bracelet. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see that it is not a large watch, but the bracelet gives it immense shoulder and presence that a 38.7 millimeter watch wouldn't otherwise have. It's perhaps not even as thick as you'd expect for a tourbillon that winds automatically. Only 13.2 millimeters thick. The watch from lug to lug measures 49 millimeters, but I can't precisely indicate how far it actually measures across the wrist with the bracelet, because I'm not sure what the measuring point would be, but I would say it approximates a 58 millimeter lug to lug dimension, and that's purely a judgment call on my part. The spacing between the lugs, if you want to throw this one on a strap, is 19 millimeters, but I wanted to show you the watch as it left the factory. I wanted to show you what a $104,000 Omega watch looks like, and by the way, that was the price in 2006 pre-inflation. The bracelet is exquisite. The links are seamlessly joined and it truly does evoke the legendary yellow brick road of Dorothy fame. Absolutely stunning in its combination of polish and satin. The sheer depth of it, the tolerances, it's seamless. There's almost no daylight showing through. On the underside you can see smart construction, gaps that allow it to articulate as well as vent the wrist on a hot day. Pins and sleeves used here, and I can actually endorse that. Those are there to keep very delicate links resolutely planted, and note how many individual removable links there are. You will size this one precisely. Although, by this point, it had been purchased and subsumed by Omega, the Italian hallmarks on this bracelet reveal it as a product of the company once known as Lascor, which was the gold bracelet supplier to Omega through the 80s and 90s, purchased by Swatch Group during the 90s, and you can see those hallmarks blazing inside the clasp. For those who are curious, this bracelet is referenced 1601 with 942 end pieces, and you'll note that there is a sizing slider internally, as well as a trigger system for release. So when this one closes, it closes quite securely, and as massive as it is, it's amazing that you can open it with just a press of the trigger. You feel like you'd need Moses to part something this massive. And impressive in just how seamless it is once closed, the partition point is anything but obvious. Jumping back to the case, it is a Baroque form. You'll know it well from other DeVilles. You can see it's a combination of creases, flowing lines, swooshes and swoops, with the bezel itself set in between the hoods of the lugs, almost like a gem set in the pincers of a ring. The crown, fairly standard and Omega branded, but securely protected from shearing by a rudimentary set of crown guards, unexpected on a purely formal watch. The crown is an interesting piece because it's used exclusively for winding the watch, though an automatic winder with a 45 hour power reserve, you can turn this crown counterclockwise, it doesn't pull out, it doesn't push in, and you can manually wind the watch. Because the watch was designed by Maurice Grimm, the Omega watchmaker once loaned to Audemars Piguet to help them create their tourbillon automatique, it uses many of the same principles, including a case back winding system. Look up the Audemars Piguet caliber 2870 and you'll see the family resemblance. That little crown on the case back which you then pull out allows you to make adjustments because the hour and minute hands are metallized deposits on sapphire crystals. Because the bezel is so broad and you can see there's a small dome at the center to break it up, it would otherwise be a huge, almost quarter inch thick expanse. There's actually a set of pinions underneath the bezel structure that drive those sapphires radially from the outside. You have those radially driven sapphire crystals for hours and minutes. You have a rose lathe cut, guilloche style, silver base. You have dark blue indices. And then you have your seconds hand, which is actually the tourbillon carriage. You, you'll even note that the regulator, the fine adjustment regulator for the tourbillon, doubles as the seconds indicator. Blued overcoil hairspring. It's an overcoil to redouble the effects of the tourbillons 
quality of canceling out gravity, and so you have both the overcoil and the tourbillon for that purpose. It beats weight 21,600 vibrations per hour. It's a 48 joule movement, automatic winding, and with a platinum winding mass for higher efficiency. You can see the God Kronos on the case back. This is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer, one of the few cases of a tourbillon manufacturer putting its money where its mouth is and its reputation on the line, actually COSC certifying a tourbillon. There's a dimple style seconds track and there's a rusticated dish underneath that acts as both a reflector and an element of background texture, tying the watch to its inspiration, Dominique Loiseau's Montre de Sable pocket watch series from the 1980s. It's clearly related. Uh, if only in inspiration. Now the watch is hefty in the hand, but it'll wear on a smaller wrist on a bracelet or a strap. If you want the ultimate in fit, you'll put it on a strap, but if you want the ultimate in aesthetic richness and exuberance, you're gonna wanna go with the decadence of this yellow brick road bracelet. Only a few dozen of these made per year. I've never seen one in the triple digits. That's the true sequence number on the dial. See this dream and make it yours on the watch box.